Hi, my name is Malcolm and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Pig Lab. Welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. In this video, I'll be going through a past year examination question on the topic of heat energy. I have also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So let's get started. Question 1. Justin attached a deflated balloon to a flask as shown in this diagram and then afterwards he's going to place a candle flame near the flask. Now a few minutes later, they said that the balloon became inflated as shown in the diagram below. So now our job is to find out what does this experiment show us. So let's try and understand this. We know that there was a candle flame, so I'm just going to draw this out. A candle flame was placed underneath the flask. And the moment this happened, the balloon was inflated. Now, in order for the balloon to be inflated, what must have entered the balloon? There must have been air. And where do you think the air came from? The air could have only come from inside the flask. So we know the air inside the flask must have entered into the balloon. But the question here is why? How come the air will enter the balloon when the candle flame was placed under the flask? This was because when the candle flame was placed below the flask, what do you think happened to the air? The air is going to gain heat from the flame. And as a result, when air gains heat, what happens to it? The air is going to expand. And when air expands, what happens to its volume? Its volume is going to increase. So I'm going to write this out over here. We know that the air expanded and increased in volume. And since the air increases in volume, this means did the air occupy more space or less space inside the flask? The air is going to occupy more space. But is there space left inside the flask? No. So as a result, where is the air going to go to? the air will occupy more space inside the balloon. And that is why the balloon would be inflated. So with this understanding, we can finally take a look at the options. Now, the first option says that air is a poor conductor of heat. Now, many of you might be tempted to think that this is true. So the answer is option one. But remember, we must make sure this is something that the experiment shows. But from the experiment above, can we tell that air is a poor conductor of heat? No. So we can write down option one is not shown in the experiment above. Which means even though air is a poor conductor of heat, can we choose this as our answer? No. So let's cross it out. Next, let's take a look at option two. They said the flask was the one that lost heat to the balloon. Now, does this have anything to do with the flask? Definitely no. So we can cross out option two. Now let's move on to option three. They said that the flask is a poor conductor of heat. Now is that true? Let's recall, what are flasks usually made of? They are usually made of glass. And is glass a poor conductor of heat? Definitely. But can we tell from the experiment above? No. So this is very similar to option one where the experiment does not show that the flask is made of a poor conductor of heat. Therefore, can we choose option 3? No. So let's cross it out. And lastly, what about option 4? They say the air inside the flask is going to gain heat and expand, causing the balloon to inflate. Now, is that true? Yes, this is shown in the experiment above, which means the correct answer should be option 4. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out more videos by us, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!